This week on Fusion Monday, we're covering Revolve. Learn how to model this cup and this soda can and apply the decal logo. Stick around, it's going to be revolutionary. So before we jump into it, we're gonna need this document. If you're in my class, it's found on Schoology. If you're in the YouTube world, go to mrsecrets.com, link below, and you can find it under the Fusion Monday files. So let's get into it. We're gonna start with the cup. We're gonna be working with Revolve for this assignment, which is exactly what you see in that graphic right there, where you're gonna draw a profile, and then we're gonna spin that profile around a center axis. So we're gonna draw this cup, so we're gonna start a sketch. Once again, it doesn't really matter which way, which plane we choose, but understand now, these planes are linked. So the top is this one, the front is this one. So we're gonna choose the front, and that way the top will actually be the top. So we're gonna go ahead and get the basic shape running at a similar size, which is around um, four and a half inches, and then I'm gonna come out, come down, come at an angle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come back to the origin. So we're gonna go ahead, I hit escape on the keyboard, and I'm gonna dimension this. This is 4.5, and then the top here is 1.75. And then the little lip is 3 eighths of an inch, or 0.375. And then the distance at the bottom is going to be one. Now we can notice that it is not going horizontally. So we're gonna go ahead and use our geometric constraint, and we're gonna make that horizontal. So there is our basic shape of the cup, but as you know, most you know beverage cups from a retailer have a little lip on the bottom. That's mainly for strength. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add that. We're gonna use a rectangle, and we're gonna grab this corner. And our rectangle is gonna be uh, 0.1 by 0.25. So now we have our rectangle, and we have our shape. So we're gonna go ahead and do a revolve. So revolve, we're gonna have to hit finish sketch and we are gonna go ahead and choose revolve. And it's gonna select the profile. We want this one, but we also want this one. So we gotta click on two. The next thing is the axis. If we select here, you would see we get that shape, which is not what we want. Unselect that. If we select here, it's gonna err on us because it's going against itself. If we go here, we're gonna get a shape that does is technically a cup, but sure doesn't work like we intend. We wanna choose this line as our center axis. And we go ahead and click okay. So there is our cup minus the fact that it doesn't hold anything. So to make something, we could have drawn a thin profile. Um, we could have drawn a thin profile in our sketch. So if we go over here, we could have drawn you know, a thin bottom and a wall and then revolved it and gotten the cup in one sequence. But um, in this case, we are gonna show you how to use another command and that command is called shell and it is located right here. And what shell does is exactly what it sounds like. It takes and makes it a shell, makes it a thin body. Think of a shell of an egg, how it's just a thin walled thing and it's hollow on the inside. That's what this does, so click on it. Um, the first thing it says is what uh, face do you want to remove? So to make a shell, it can't be truly hollow. It has to have one removed face. So we are gonna pick the body and the face all in one click. And then it's gonna say how thick do we want the walls? And in our case, I want the walls point one, uh, yeah, point one is fine. Point one thickness is the point. And we can go ahead and click OK. Now we have a true cup. Maybe a little top heavy, but that's okay. So now um, the other thing we can do is up to this point, we've been using what's called a generic material. We can actually specify this as glass and it will then give us an accurate or relatively accurate weight of what this would actually uh, weigh in real life. So how do we do that? Well, first we need to save it. So let's go ahead and hit save. And um, this would be week four and your last name and uh, glass. I'm sorry, it's not glass. I made a mistake. That's cup. 
we're gonna be making a glass here we go so we'd save now we want to make it don't forget you should have saved it in your fusion monday folder so uh we're gonna go ahead and hit right click and we are gonna slide down here to physical materials so i right clicked on uh, the title here and then i can come down here and you can see there's one labeled glass and then we can choose any glass we want so i think frosted glass will be fun i'm gonna right click and hold and drag across and drop it on the part and there is a frosted glass doesn't really look like anything might be more fun to do gray glass there we go that's looking more fun but you can jump around i always like uh to play with students and go into metals and make it pure gold now the advantage of this is so we've made it pure gold you're gonna for the assignment do it in glass but we can go over here and we can go to properties and then we can go physical and this thing weighs 47 ounces and if we jump over to the interwebs and today in october of 21 gold is 1765 dollars an ounce so if we go 1765 times 40 let's do 48 it's almost there this is an eighty four thousand seven hundred twenty dollar gold glass so anyways Hope you learned something in this one. Now, we're gonna move on to the soda can. Okay, here we go. We're now gonna move on to the soda can. So once again, this is a revolve, so we're reinforcing the uh, information we learned in the cup. So we're gonna go ahead and start a sketch. Once again, we want the top to be the actual top of the can and the bottom to be the bottom. So we're gonna choose the front plane. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started with our line. So the can is four inches tall. So we are gonna slide up to four inches and I'm gonna go ahead and remember, we can just type in the numbers we want as we go and we'll zoom out and then line, I use the quick key on the um, L on the keyboard for the quick key. And it's gonna be a one inch wide, uh, at least at the top. I don't know if these are actual can measurements. I just kind of made them up, but this works. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I'm gonna have a little down of 0.05 for that little edge. And then a line that's going to go off at an angle and then another one that's going to come down um, towards the end now this line in an angle we need to put a dimension on of an angle so we're going to go ahead and dimension it and it is actually not between this and this the drawing shows the angle between this line and this line and they don't have to be adjacent to each other in order to do a dimension so this is a 125 degree angle and then if we say the outer diameter of the can, its radius is 1.125 or one and an eighth, we now get that fully constrained with that angle. Now, um, I would like this, see how it can drop, raise and lower. We are gonna put a line from here to here with a horizontal constraint. So we're gonna go line, but we are gonna use a construction line. And I don't know if I, I have not covered construction lines. What construction lines are, just like in drawing where you're drawing a faint line that's construction, this is a line that basically when we move into the revolve or into an extrusion or any feature-based uh, tool, it's going to ignore this line. So it's a line that you can use to help control your drawing but isn't going to be affected by the extrusion or the uh, revolve. So we're going to draw a line from here to here. And we don't really need it right now, actually. We could have done other constraints to get it that way. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna need it in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and do a horizontal constraint to lock in, oops, I'm on that dot. So let's go horizontal constraint, there we go. Now we're gonna draw in the rest of the shape, which is the bottom. It's gonna come down, oops. Notice that uh, construction lines are modal, meaning once I've turned them on, they stay on until I turn them off. So I've turned off construction line. Now it should not be a construction. We're gonna come across for a little flat bottom. And then we're gonna go in and create an arc, another new skill. Here's an arc, we're gonna use a three point. There's a center point arc and a tangential arc. Tangential would sort of apply, but I wanna show you another skill. So we're gonna use three point arc. We're gonna select the end of this line here and the center of our can and we're gonna bring it up like that. Now we need to do some dimensions. So dimensions are numbers typically, but you can also use constraints that work like dimensions without the numbers. We want this line to be tangent to our hidden line, which is this symbol. So we go ahead and select this and this, and you'll notice that it produces a tangent line that I cannot change. 
So um, we have two dimensions to put on. We need this little bottom one here, which is another 0.05 dimension. And then we need a, oh, I'm sorry, it was three dimensions. We need a dimension from this point to the bottom of this line. And that is 0.25. And then the very last thing we need is we need an angle for this line. So we're going to click here and here, and it is 25 degrees. So we're going to drag it up here and do 25. So we now have the profile of our soda can. And we're going to go ahead and hit finish, finish sketch. And we'll do the same thing we did before. Revolve the center line. And we now have a soda can shaped object. Now for the real fun, we're going to put on a decal. Now a decal is just an image we pull off the internet. Normally a PNG seems to work the best. It, if you really want to do it and have it professionally look right, then you're going to need to modify the image through Illustrator or something else to get it to be the right lengths and sizes so that it would wrap around this can properly. And it won't wrap well around the top or the bottom, which in a real can isn't that way. So you'd have to do some other things. But that's not what we're really focused on today. I'm really just focused on how would you bring in an image. So to do that, first you got to go to the interwebs and find a image. Now, I am a child of the 80s and 90s, and Jolt was the original energy drink. I never drank it, but I thought it would be a fun one to do. So we're going to go ahead and try to find an image. So we're going to click on this one. Um, it doesn't say if it's a PNG. We kind of need it as a PNG. The best way to do it is right click and hit save image. It is a PNG. Great. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to change it so a name to. Um, so we have it. I don't. I haven't tested this image. I just went there and thought it'd be fun. So let's hope it works. So we now have the image saved to our computer. We are going to now go to uh, insert, and we are going to go to decal. And then we are going to upload from our computer, and mine's in the downloads folder. There it is. It should be the top one, Jolt. And we're going to click open. And then we got to click on the surface that we want the decal to put on. So there it is. So there is my Jolt. Um, it is not the proper way it goes on the can. If you look here, it goes on the can like that. So we're going to rotate it 90 degrees with this. And then there's these. Uh, things here. The square my uh, cursor's over will allow us to slide it around. The um, This line, vertical line above it allow you to stretch it vertically. Right? So I can stretch it up vertically. And then I can sweat, stretch it horizontally. Right? But I also could have gone this direction. And that just zooms and brings it all in and keeps it proportional. I'm actually going to try to zoom it out like this. And you'll notice it doesn't wrap all the way around the can. It gives a weird kind of thing in the back. But you get the idea. If you were doing it on a flat surface, then you could obviously get it to look really good. So that's how we put a decal on. We just click OK. And now we have a decal on our rather poor version of a Jolt can. But you get the point. So hopefully you learned something. I'll catch you in the next one. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you found this interesting. Have a great day.